Okay, if you're like me and you've owned an 1818 VSL, you have a new MacBook Pro and you're running OS X Yosemite and you just cannot get it to work for various different reasons. It's crackling, it's popping, you're not hearing any audio through the headphones, it's not working with Logic, it's not working with uh, Persona Studio One, so on and so forth, and you've tried absolutely everything. You've uninstalled, reinstalled, the audio box software is just not working right for you. You've tried everything and you're about to give up try this one last thing. I've, um, I have another interface that I've just been using in the meantime, but have wanted to use my AudioBox 1818 VSL because it's something I can use mobily. I can run around with it. So, try this. If you've tried everything, try this. It worked for me. And the greatest thing about this solution is that you don't end up having to use the AudioBox software to make it work, which is awesome because I think the AudioBox software is a nightmare and a total debacle. So, here's how you do it. First of all, you need to install the 1.3 drivers again. I will provide a link to that and that will take you to this page. Click this right here, download the AudioBox 1880 BSL 1.3 Mac drivers. It will have you restart your computer. After you do that, open up the software you just installed, which you'll find in Finder. Go to Applications, and it will be listed down here under AudioBox VSL. Open it up. When you open it up, it's going to ask you to update the firmware. And a lot of times, if you update the firmware that first time, it doesn't work. It will give you error messages telling you to turn off your 1818 VSL, unplug it, then plug it back in and turn it back on, or it will just not work right. Either way, most times it takes more than once to get it to successfully update the firmware. In my case, it took three or four times of trying. Keep doing it until it says you have successfully updated and then go to the setup view inside of your AudioBox program um, and make sure that the firmware says it's updated to 1.19. Now, if you've done all that, you have to get rid of it all. So you have to perform a full uninstallation of the VSL software, the audio box, using the steps outlined in this article. And this article is here. I'll provide a link to that as well. If you're like me and using OS 10 Yosemite, here's the instructions up here for OS 10.6. But for my case and your case, OS 10, follow these instructions to the T. Do everything it says exactly how it says. Um, it's going to have you delete a bunch of files. It's going to have you empty the trash, reboot your computer. After you, after you reboot, you're going to have to repair your disk permissions. The way you do that is you just go into Finder, make a new Finder window, and hold Command-Shift-U. And that will be able to get you into utilities to where you open up disk utility. Click on the lower of the two hard drives, of your main hard drive, and just simply click Repair Disk Permissions. That will repair disk permissions. Then it's going to have you reset your PRAM um, after you've shut down or restarted your Mac from repairing your disk permissions. Then once again, you turn off your Mac, unplug everything from it, and all you basically do is just hold the Command, Option, P, and R keys when you start up and boot your computer pressing the power button. And it will, you just wait, you hold those keys down until you hear the computer restart again and then you release those keys, and that is reset your PRAM. Now, what you have now successfully done is removed AudioBox software from your computer, and um, everything should be good to go. Now, here's how to actually make it work inside of Studio One or Logic. I'd show you how to do it in Pro Tools, but I just got Pro Tools and don't know how to use it quite yet. So for Studio One, open up a new project, create a new song, or if you have a pre-existing song, you can go into that. But for our purposes, we're going to create a new audio track. We want to set up the, well first, go up to Preferences, Studio One Preferences, and make sure that your audio device is the 1818 VSL. Click OK. Now, for your track, say you have, in my case, a microphone plugged into the first input out of eight inputs in the 1818 VSL. Um, 
you want to go down to this little black bar here. It might be blank. It might show this input L and R. Um, but either way, we'll just do it from scratch. So click on it and go to Audio I.O. Setup. Um, you might see something like this, or it might be completely blank, and it will look like this. So to add and activate your um, eight inputs, you just click Add Mono eight times. And then click Apply, and that will activate everything. So now you have your audio box activated. Click here down at the black box again and you want to assign this track to the input that you have your instrument or your mic um, plugged into. In my case it's input one. And then click the record button and you are active and ready to go and record but you're going to notice you still can't hear stuff through your headphones most likely. That is because you go into the mix window, your output channel here Make sure that it's, it might be set on none, it might be on main, it might be on anything. Whatever it's on, you want to click on it and make sure it is set to phones 7 plus 8. And now you will be able to hear and record and everything works beautifully, no crackling, no popping with Persona Studio One using your headphone jack from the 1818 VSL as your output. And you're good to go there. Hallelujah. All right, so how's, here's how you do it in Logic. It's a little different. Open up Logic. And you're going to want to create a new project. I'll close this one. New. And it prompts you with starting it off by creating your first track. Whether you're creating a software track or an audio track, the most important part here to be able to hear back what you record through the headphone output on the audio box. Notice over here when you start a new track, it might look like this. Click the details to drop it down. Output. Click that. Come over here to the drop down menu. Make sure the output is set to output 7 and 8. Create. And there you have it. You have, as you can see, my levels are working just fine down here and you will be able to hear it back through the headphones great no cracking no popping everything will sound great and you can hear it however let's say you already have a project and you have um, a track that has not been assigned to output 7 and 8 and instead it's assigned to the default output 1 and 2 so you'll see when I switch to this track look down here this track is assigned to output 7 and 8, whereas this track is assigned to just output, which is the default main L plus R 1 and 2 output, and you're not going to be able to hear anything through your headphones. So if you want to switch that, your pre-existing track, so they all go through output 7 and 8, all you do is pull up the mixer window by pressing X is the shortcut in Logic, and here you'll see all your tracks. Here are the two output channels, output regular, output seven and eight. So for this track that you're on, if you wanna switch it to output seven and eight, all you do is go here to this little uh, button here where it says stereo out, stereo out, or it might say output one and two. Whatever the matter, right click it, come down here to output, you'll see a drop down menu, and make sure it's set to output seven and eight. And as you can see, it has removed the old output channel that we had that was no longer in service. And now you have everything working in Logic. You can hear yourself, no crackling, no popping. Everything sounds great. And you can hear it all through the output of your headphone output that is on the 1818 VSL. And that is how to solve the obnoxious problem that has been going on with the 1818 VSL for about three years now. And um, it also allows you, the greatest thing is you no longer have to mess with the audio box software and have it running to get all of your other, to get everything to work. Um, and what this effectively does is it turns your audio box 1818 VSL into a class compliant device, which basically means you don't have to run the audio box software simultaneously while you're using the audio box 1818 VSL.
which I think is fantastic because the audio box software has been a nightmare from day one, in my opinion. That's how you do it. Hope it works for you all. Took me about three years to figure that one out. Thanks to Personas um, for finally getting me a solution that worked. It took them a very, very, very long time. Um, but this one finally works, and I hope it works for you. Take care.